This is the 1112 Explorer, used for diagnosing calculus and caries and for exploring subgingival root surfaces, restorations, and frications. It is made of a flexible metal that conducts vibrations from the working end to the clinician's fingers. The 1112 Explorer features an angled functional shank which allows it to better adapt around interproximal root surfaces. For a right-handed provider to explore posterior surfaces towards you, sit at the 9 o'clock position. For anterior surfaces towards you, sit at the 8 o'clock position. Left-handed providers will sit at the 3 o'clock position for posterior surfaces towards and at 4 o'clock for anterior surfaces towards. For a right-handed provider to explore posterior surfaces away from you, sit at the 10 to 11 o'clock position for posterior teeth. For anterior surfaces away from you, sit at the 12 o'clock position. Left-handed providers will sit at the 1 to 2 o'clock position for posterior surfaces away, and at 12 o'clock for anterior surfaces away. Grasp the instrument along the knurling using a light, feather-like touch. The middle finger may be placed at the base of the shank for better tactile sensitivity. The 1112 Explorer is a double-ended instrument. In order to determine the correct working end for surfaces towards and away, place the tip of the instrument into the interproximal space. For exploring posterior teeth, the terminal shank should be parallel to the mesial and distal surfaces. For anterior teeth, when using the correct working end interproximally, the terminal shank should go across the facial or lingual surfaces. As a quick reminder, think posterior, parallel, anterior, across. Here is an example of using the incorrect working end for both anterior and posterior teeth. See how the working end does not stay adapted to the tooth surfaces, making for inaccurate exploring and discomfort for the patient as the tip may press into the gingiva. After positioning yourself and determining the correct working end, you're ready to begin exploring. Begin by placing the last third of the tip against the tooth supergingivally. Make sure you're not using the tip to explore, just the last third of the tip. Gently slide the tip below the gingival margin and make short, overlapping strokes making sure to roll the instrument to keep the tip adapted at all times. Use light, wrist-activated strokes to progress around the tooth surface. At the midline of anterior teeth, a horizontal stroke can help ensure that nothing was missed when transitioning from surfaces towards and away.